Burley So. Hello everybody and welcome to Burley So. I'm your host Purified and today we've got a Halloween project. It's a Sophie So project and it's a spider web design. I was at the dollar store and I found some templates that you could like spray maybe spray snow on a window or something like that so I scanned it. Um, the spider web one and I just kind of cropped the picture and then I used it as a background to do this spider web design. So let's jump right in and if you don't know how to import an image you can go check out it. Uh, I'll put a link up right here for another video but basically I'm just importing this image right here to use as a template. Um, you could probably use it as much more if, if you want. I'm just doing a simple design. You can make it as intricate as you want. But uh, I've got the files available for you for you to download in the comments below. Or in the description. So if you want to check that out, you can play with those. Um, one is the Sophie So file. And the other one is the export file in DST. But you can see I imported the spider web as a object, as an image object. And you do that by clicking on the right little paintbrush. And now I'm just going around it. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my um, points. So if you've seen any of these videos or if you know Selfie Cell, so it's every third click creates an axis, like a, a point. So I'm going points where the line of the spider web is going to come out from the middle. And then two nodes in between each point. And then I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do that on every layer. And I'm just going to do this rather quickly because I can shape it in a little bit. So as I go through here, I'm doing the same thing, just two points between each intersection where the web's going to intersect with the lines that come out from the middle and then the solid point, the green point and it's going to keep going around and do that all the way into the middle now as I finish this up I just want to say that I had the video about two weeks ago with Brian, my friend that repaired sewing machines so I'm gonna and that, that I had split into two pieces so after this week's video, um, the beginning of November, I'll post that. And then people have also been asking about how to take a DST file, and that's what this um, export is in DST because Brother Machines will read both PES and DST. But people have been asking how to um, export from Selfie So into PES. PES and you can't. Uh, Sophie So, the current version, doesn't support it. But there's another program called Wilcom True Sizer, and I mentioned that in one of my previous videos, I think the last one. Um, but you can, Wilcom True Sizer will take and convert files, either embroidery design files or export files for you. So I'll do a video on that after part two of, of the handyman or the repairman video. But getting back to this, you can see that I've got all the rings done. And now, because I left those two nodes, because I have the two nodes in between, I can make a nice little arc. And the points will help form that arc. And you can see that I'll end up all lining up when I attach or actually create a line that goes from the center, like the spokes of the spider web. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to shape this. And as I said earlier, you, if you want to get more intricate, you know, maybe even keep the spider in, get bold. If anybody does something like that, I'd be really interested to see it. You know, I like to see anybody's designs. If you want to do a video response or uh, post a picture somewhere, put it in the comments. Um, I'm just doing this as a simple, quick design to give you guys some ideas of what you can do for Halloween. But now you can see we got the outside ring done as we hide the picture with control B. And now we'll go around and do the rest of the circles. 
and finish shaping it. So now I'll just fast forward, but getting back to the files, so in the description, if you go, it's, there's a link to my uh, Google Drive, and there's a DST file, and there's also the Sophie So, I think it's SS1 file, that is the spider web. So you can take the SS1 file, and you can open it in Sophie So and you can build off this current design or change it or play with it or do whatever you want. Um, the export file is a DST file as I mentioned that one you can import into your brother machine and then use that as you want to go ahead and create spider webs and things if you like. Um, I'm not responsible for any damage or anything like that. I'm gonna have a stitch out video after this it worked perfectly for my machine. Um, the file comes from a clean computer, so but I'm not responsible for any damage or anything like that. I guess I gotta say that. Um, so Sophie, so always remember save, save, save. I probably haven't saved enough. A little bold, but now we've got our basic shape drawn, and that's the rings of the spider web. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and then next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the spokes of the spider web and that's gonna be pretty simple. So basically I'm just gonna take the line tool and you could do this with the other tool as well but I'm just gonna take the line tool and then I'm gonna go ahead and create the spokes and then I'm not gonna go all the way to the center I'm gonna stop on the inside of the first rung on the point of the first rung of the spider web and it doesn't have to be perfect at this point because what we're going to end up having to do is adjust the points of our spider web rings and our line a little bit and kind of put it all in line um, but I'll just take you through this real quick and then we'll show you how to put the attributes on and export it and then you'll be able to embroider it. Now as I finish up this part uh, I just want to let you guys know that I also got a new camera so like these Sophie So videos I just capture on my computer the other videos I shoot with a different camera obviously um, but it's not the greatest camera and you notice that the ratio the aspects mostly four by three I'm gonna go ahead and I've got a new camera that I can shoot wider screens so I'm trying to do what I can to upgrade uh, my video qualities I do appreciate everybody watching commenting and being supportive so I'll put what I can back into it just to show my appreciation for everybody's support and try to upgrade my equipment and whatnot so now back to the video I've got all the spokes done and now I'm gonna set the Tributes, the stitch tributes, and the stitch properties. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make the stitch visible, and make it a satin stitch. I'm going to change the color to something that represents what I want. And then I'm going to change the upper and the lower height to 3, to point 3. And that's going to be what I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into the. And then also I'm going to copy the attributes. So in the attribute editor, you want to. I, I really don't know the attribute editor very well. Um, I've got the first like four boxes checked. I know I know you can't. I don't think you can change or copy the dense or the height of the stitch. So the upper and the lower height. I don't see a property in there that for that. But um, you can set the color and all that with the copy. So um, it is somewhat useful. I'm just not that proficient on that part of this program. When Sophie So 2 comes out, I'll put a lot more time into finding out every little trick. But you've got enough that will save you some time so you can right click on the next spoke and all the different webs, um, web pieces, and you can at least copy or paste the attributes and that will give you your color and the visibility and the stitch type and then you just have to go in and adjust 
the upper and the lower height, which is 0.3, like I said. So now you just go around and do all the spokes and then all the rings. And then once you've got that done, we're going to go ahead and align everything and shape the length of our spokes for our spider web and make sure that everything's lined up. So as I said, I'm going to come off the middle here and I'm just going to make sure this is all set. And I'm going to work my way out and then I'll begin adjusting everything to make it look pretty. Now I think I think you basically get the idea here. So in a second here I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and skip through this part and then we're going to go ahead and adjust the points of our spider web rings if you want to call them with our lines. Um, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you had a starting and an ending point to the web as you were making it. So that's going to be the only part that has like two pieces that you have to adjust. So kind of give you an idea here what it looks like to scale. Um, then we'll bring it back out and go ahead and adjust our pieces. That's what it looks like in 3D. But I'm going to start where I have the two, the two pieces, or the, I'm sorry, the two, uh, the ending and the beginning point. It's about 1 a.m. here right now, and I'm just, it's Thursday, I'm trying to promise a video by every Friday, so, and I just, if I babble a little bit, it's just late, and I apologize. But, now I'm zoomed in, and I'm going to go ahead and, where I started and finished my web, I'm going to kind of start on that, that part. I'm just going to work my way around and I'm going to adjust these points to the lines. So the lines are straight. We just need to move the points of the web over so that they're lined up with that. And you might be able to create a neat effect somehow, um, but like I said, this is just the basic design. So I'm just simply doing it like that. And now I'm just going to work my way around and make sure that all these are lined up so you can see this is pretty simple uh, you know you're just going around attaching the points my initial run I had done this a little bit differently um, and I made it really hard on myself I had one version before this that didn't turn out so good I made segments for each of the web pieces between the spokes that went out and that created for a lot of individual pieces to handle so then I went with going all the way around like making the rings in one piece but now we're just gonna finish up and make sure this looks good now it's about scaling it moving the lines around a little bit um, just making sure that everything's lined up in the way you like it make sure the length of the spokes is correct uh, you can make it longer you can elongate it so it comes out of the corner for example, if you wanted to maybe maybe make a embroidered placemat for Halloween, you could have the rectangle with the spider webs kind of growing out of the corner of the the placemat. Um, I think you can kind of do a lot of cool stuff. Maybe on uh, the knees of some old pants, you know, for a Halloween party. I don't know, but now I'm just going to go ahead and scale these spokes to where I want them and once that's done I, we're pretty much finished it's, then it's just setting the stitch order and that I do some manipulating with because I don't want the jump stitches getting covered by the ring so I want to make sure that I do the spokes last so that those jump stitches lay over the spider web, spider web rings. And then I can also adjust the rings so that I've got a decent sized jump stitch between each segment to make it easy to trim. So we'll go ahead and jump into that in a second here. Now that I'm all finished, 
and we'll take one last look in 3D mode. And then now what we can do is we have to group it together and make it one object. As soon as I'm done making my adjustments here, and then that will allow us to go ahead and edit, edit in, in um, edit the stitch order. Excuse me. And also, then we can export it. So now we're gonna edit the stitch order, and I did an okay job on the stitch order. If you want to go in there and play around with it, you're more than welcome. Um, it's not perfect. I'm, I'm sure if I would have put a little bit more thought into it, I could have um, had a little bit better where I didn't have to trim jump stitches as much. But it turned out pretty good. I'd say it's 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 reasonable. Um, and plus, start to finish, I think this project is, you know, to make this design maybe 20 minutes. So if you really want to spend some time on it, you know, a couple days, you can really dial this thing in. But now you can see that you just shuffle around the pieces to get this, the jump stitches the way you want them. And you can be strategic. It's kind of like a little puzzle, you know. But like I said, I just want to make sure that my main focus on this was having enough jump stitch to cut and making sure that there wasn't a bunch of jump stitch that would potentially be covered by other stitches so that I didn't have to do it as much. So that's why I'm doing the rings first and then I'm gonna do the spokes on top of the rings. And then that way that big long jump stitch between spokes, um, most, most of them won't have to be trimmed at all. A few of them will, but most of them won't. And like I said, if you wanted to be strategic, I bet you, you could just figure out a way to uh, get the order right so you didn't have to hardly cut any jump stitches. So as I work on this, I also want to say that I plan on trying to do these little holiday themes when we, when we get close to them, if I've got something that I think is worth your time. Um, so we've got obviously this for, for Halloween, and then I'll try to get something out for Thanksgiving. And I'll also try to get it out a little bit sooner. I know right now it's only, you know, it's already a week before Halloween, so you maybe a lot of your projects are already done, but at least you'll have it for next year. Create a folder and save your embroidery designs. Um, but I'll try to get something out a little sooner for Thanksgiving. So I think you guys get the idea of the stitch order here. And like I said, I'm going to go in and uh, run a simulation next. I usually do that. I don't know why. Um, I think it's neat. <laughs> but also, I, I feel like I can get an idea of what it's going to look like, how it's going to stitch. It's good to see sometimes the action of it just versus looking at it into the stitch editor, looking at it in the stitch editor. Um, so yeah, I'm going to skip ahead to that part. And then, as I mentioned as well, I'm going to post the actual video of the project stitching. I'm going to post that separate. Um, and that's just going to be sometime before next week. So I, I think ultimately next week I'm going to end up probably putting out two videos. One of the stitcher of this. And I'm actually going to try to do it right away. Maybe I'll do it like Friday night, Saturday night, and get it up right away. Um, but then you can see what it looks like when it's stitching on the machine. This is some cool music. But we'll go ahead and move forward. Now I'm changing the background. And I guess I didn't skip, skip ahead. I guess I just talked right through it. But um, just change the I'm changing the background to get a better reference maybe for the white thread. And then I, I always skip the, the stitch speed ahead some because it's pretty slow at its default. And let's change it back to something that's kind of Halloween-y. We'll go with this bright orange. And then we'll go ahead and simulate out the stitch. And I'll give you an idea what it looks like at the end here. I think I might have shown it in the beginning. And that's really going to be it. And then I'll just go over, like I said, the schedule coming up is going to be, I'm going to put the stitch order up as soon as I possibly can, or the, the stitch out of this. Then I'm going to put out the part two of the Brian video, the interview with Brian. He's got some really good stuff in there. 
and the following week will be the Will Comp True Sizer video. So now we've got it pretty much done. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and import it into our machine and you can see how to do that in one of my other videos if you don't know how. But we're going to go ahead and export the design, save the design. So you want to do both of those things. You want to make sure that you save it and save often, especially with Sophie So. And then we're going to export it as a DST so I can go ahead and import it into my machine. So that's really it, guys. I, guys and girls, I really appreciate everybody watching the videos. Uh, as always, if you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you haven't, leave your comments below. If you think anybody else will enjoy these videos, please share them with your friends. I'm Purified, and thanks for watching Burly So.